Kia ora ladies and gents, welcome back to the Black Jersey, it's your boy Max hosting the channel and welcome back to the channel, it's been a very long time since I made a proper video, as you can see I just got married and I've also been very busy with my assessments at uni, but what a better way to get back into the swing of things in YouTube, um, I'm probably not going to be back on Instagram till January the 18th as I promised, but yeah, um, a bit of controversy for this new video, um, as you can see I've got a bit of a clickbaity title saying Bowden's not a 10, because today's topic is going to be a player analysis on Bowden Barrett, who has recently played his 100th test for the All Blacks, there's been a lot of chat about how he's probably one of the greatest first fives of all time, he's the second best after Dan Carter, and I'm here to debunk it, and I'm not just going to slam him, attack him personally, I'm going to use statistics as per normal, you know me better than that guys, you know I love my stats. So first off, um, before we get into that, I'm going to explain kind of how his career has gone on and how things have happened for Bowden as an All Black. So he debuted in 2012 as a 21 year old, very, very young, and so that's how he's been able to accumulate 100 caps at only 30 years old. Bowden Barrett's also scored over 700 points in his career, but when you take a deeper look at things, he's actually attempted more conversions in his career than Owen Farrell, the England's captain, and Owen Farrell, who debuted the same year as Bowden Barrett, has already reached 1,000 points, even though Barrett has attempted more conversions and scored more tries than Farrell, far more tries than Farrell, Bowden is the highest scoring first five of all time in terms of tries, he's got 39 tries out of 100 tests, but 11 of those were against the Wallabies, so... I'm not sure if that's just the checker era having terrible defense with the Wallabies, or if it's Bowden just being very, very good. I will give Bowden a few things as well. Yes, he does have the best ball handling skills in the world. Yes, he's an incredibly fast player. Look at him outpacing all these Irish players. But the problem is... A lot of people have figured out how to defend against Bowden from first five. Um, as a guy by the name of Hypersport, now known as Endgames, who has since deleted all of his videos, once said, Bowden's pace from 10 causes indecision. As you can see over here, it's the two centers marking Bowden. I'm going to explain this in my own words and paraphrase what this former YouTuber had to say. Basically... It's normally the 12 that's trying to tackle Bowden, but in this instance, it's the 13 that's got to do the job of tackling Bowden because the guy just has so much pace. And Bowden's pace leads to a lack of communication between these two Irish defenders back in 2016. And so he's able to score a very long range try with Johnny Sexton avoiding a yellow card while making the tackle at last. Now, for his stats for 2021, so so this year he's got 54 points including 3 tries, he has scored the 3 tries for the year in his last 2 tests, he got a double in his 100th test off 2 intercept tries thrown by the Welsh players. Bowden's also played 538 minutes for the All Blacks this year. All of those minutes are at first five. He did cover the bulk of the minutes at fullback in 2020, but for this year, all of his 538 minutes have been at 10. He's clearly come back from Japan saying he wants to play 10, even though it's not his best position. And um, this is one of the reasons why he's simply not a 10. He's run 342 meters this year off 29 carries with an average of 11.8 meters per carry. These are insane meters run by a first five in this absolutely phenomenal running game needs to be utilized at 15 because with Bowden being there out the back at 15, he's got far more space in front of him. He has far more time to spot holes in the opposition defense and he can just wreak havoc like classy fullbacks can do. Um, Bowden's also beaten 12 defenders this season and he's made six clean breaks. 155 passes is quite a lot of passes especially when you consider how much possession the guy kicks away. Um, the 155 passes is insanely high 
especially for a guy that's not a halfback, and that has included eight offloads, um, including this Perla that everyone was going on about, and everyone was suggesting he was the best player in the world again because he threw this pass to Ethan Blackadder. Um, Bowden's tackle percentage is pretty good as well, so he's got uh, 36 tackles out of his 43 attempts for the year. He's also made three turnovers, so his defense is reasonably solid, and that's why I feel we can trust Bowden Barrett all the way back at fullback where there's a lot more space because as I said again, he can read the game from that position much better whereas at 10 he doesn't cope too well with the rush defence. The biggest element of his game that he's failed to develop on as well is his goal kicking and for this year in particular he got 19 out of the 28 kicking attempts at goal he's made so far so that equates to a kick percentage of 67.85% and that's well below par for an international player and this year is just one of many where Bowden Barrett's goal kicking has not been up to scratch and Geordie Barrett therefore replaced his brother as the All Blacks first choice goal kicker in the rugby championship and whenever Mawong is not on I do expect Geordie Barrett not Bowden to take all the kicks and manage most of the tactical kicking as well. Um, Bowden as well just to note has played over 900 minutes for the All Blacks under Fozzie as the head coach so he has played a hefty amount of the minutes that's been available. Um, I want to highlight too his carry meters they are distorted a fair bit by the game against Wales where he ran a team high 102 meters absolute class those intercepts. Um, he's also played this year 6 of his 12 tests as a replacement, so his minutes played could be a lot higher. Now that we've covered the statistical side of things and the fact that his running game stats do tend to back up my opinion that it's best to utilise this guy at fullback, yeah, um, we do need to talk about the tactical kicking. As you can see from these examples here I've got on the screen, Bowden attempts far too many dumb kicks. These kicks are stupid, they are wasting the energy of the forwards because the forwards require using a lot of energy to get the ball at the right time when they're making a turnover. They also need to know when and when not to compete for the ball, when and when not to counter-ruck. And as a former forward, I used to play as a flanker, yeah, it's very frustrating to watch a guy just hoof the ball away for no reason. Geordie can kick from over 60 meters, whereas Bowden has genuinely neglected his kicking. He cannot kick from distance, and he cannot kick accurately either. I've explained the stats. Um, ideally, in my opinion, a first five or a goal kicking player should have a kicking percentage of 75% or above, Bowden's kick percentage for 2021 is well below that, and as you can see on the screen, there's numerous examples of games that he has cost the team due to his kicking. Now, a lot of people will be saying that a first five does not inherently have to do the goal kicking, but it is what is preferred, because a first five is one of the main decision makers in the team. Um, the spine, according to most analysts, is the hooker, the number eight, the halfback, the first five, the fullback, and the 10 is the first receiver from set piece in most occasions in rugby union, so they are essentially the main decision maker in the back line when the halfback is getting the ball out of a breakdown or a scrum. So that requires Bowden to be very sharp and really make the most of his time with the ball. He'll run it for days whenever he's got the opportunity, but in terms of setting up his fellow players for tries... He can do that, yes, but he doesn't do it as often as he should, and yet again, that's why I believe he's not a 10. Um, as you can see with the footage here as well, he really does struggle with the rush defense. This is the second time I've talked about that in this video. He, he does not cope. Pressure is very difficult for him to deal with, whereas in the Rugby World Cup 2019, he lit up the tournament because he had a crap ton of space in front of him from fullback, and he had the, all the time in the world, rather, to make the best decisions for the team, whereas Richie Mwonga, as you know from all the finals he's been in for the Crusaders, handles pressure very well, except for that one occasion against Argentina last year. So yeah, let's just recap this. Bowden has the best ball handling skills in the world, he's a good runner, he's a pretty good defender, but his goal kicking, his tactical kicking, and his ability to deal with pressure 
are just not up to international rugby standards. And I know he's played 100 tests, and it might sound disrespectful of me to say this, but I don't believe he's good enough to start for the All Blacks. Richie Mwanga manages the team far better, whereas Mwanga runs the ball very similarly to Bowden Barrett, and his tactical kicking is a lot more astute. Look, Bowden Barrett's worked very hard, he's lent his service to the team, but at the end of the day, only half of his tests have been played from 10. And tactically, we need a first five that can be a senior decision maker for the All Blacks that's not just going to hog the ball. Bowden Barrett, yes, he has all these highlight reels, but highlight reels do not equate to skill and wins. Just because you produce an amazing offload about three times or something in the game and you get a good turnover, doesn't mean you're man of the match. Rugby is about setting up your team to score, it's about outweighing your t opposition team's tactics, and Richie Moonga and Geordie Barrett just do that far better than Bowden. I do believe in the coming future he will stay on as an All Black, but he's going to be used off the bench in Jersey 22. Um, I think Ian Foster is trying to build a very experienced bench going forward as he knows Steve Hansen really screwed that up in 2019. I believe that Aaron Smith, Bowden Barrett and Rico Yuani will be Jersey 21 through to 23 at the World Cup, and I believe Falau Fakatava, Richie Moonga, um, Anton Leonard-Brown, David Havili and Geordie Barrett will be the back line, and then the wingers, obviously, who the heck knows who they are going to be. So yeah, that's um, pretty much the end of my video on Bowden Barrett. Thank you so much for watching this video, guys. Um, it's much appreciated after my wee little hiatus. I've got a few more videos coming before the year ends. They're going to be very good. I will be back on Instagram on the 18th of January. If you really miss me, head over to the Patreon. I'll update you every now and again. And of course, that will pay my uni fees. That is much appreciated. Um, again, thank you so much from the bottom of my heart for viewing the video, guys. And I will talk to you again later. See you guys.